Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, what is going on tonight? Welcome everybody to the Big Time Show podcast that is being seen live here on Facebook, on on Twitch, and on Twitter live. Welcome to everybody realizing this is Tuesday night. This is the night that we come on. Just a little bit earlier at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, appreciate you guys, those that are on Podbean also. Uh, welcome to the show on tonight. Glad to have you here. Um, sorry for that little malfunction at the beginning, but I, it really was not a malfunction. I had to make sure that everything was right, and I just saw it. Hey, uh, Ikush, what's going on, man? My brother and my brothers is in the house. Uh, we're here tonight. There's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of my buddy podcast buddies are on right now also as well. So uh, I'm pretty sure that we're going to be splitting a little time here. And I don't mind that at all. Uh, those that uh, will hang with me will hang with me. And those that will go elsewhere will go elsewhere. And then they'll come back and then they'll go back and forth like this. So this is going to be a fun night. I'm quite sure a lot of us are talking about the same things on tonight. Um, Pretty much everybody's pretty much getting ready to put to bed uh, the week, uh, the great week, I may add, that we just had against the Chargers, uh, in which, of course, you know by now, you won, you know that because you know that your your uh, days have been pretty, pretty quiet. The Facebook. Uh, has not been lit up, I'm quite sure, because your haters, the Cowboy haters, been mighty quiet. They just laying in the weeds. <laughs> laying in the weeds so they can uh, come back out, hopefully, next week when we lose. They they sure are live when we lose. Aren't they? I can't find nobody. I'm still looking for folks. I'm still looking for people. I, I don't know where they at. I, I, I wonder. You know where 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 everybody is. I maybe you got the same thing uh, uh, problem that I have. I hope that you would share as I'm doing now. Forgive me, of course, for looking down, but I'm doing that now. Uh, share. I see some comments there. Uh, I'm gonna look at them in just a second, so don't think I'm ignoring you. I'm about to get to it in just a second. Just let me share uh, some of this stuff. Uh, with you guys if you don't mind and i am doing all of this now what's going on y'all y'all still on the high are y'all still on the high from sunday um i am and but there i have to admit to you i did see or i'm thinking of some things that uh i think we need to at least think about I'm not going to say is this is just my thoughts. Let me just say it like that. You may not feel the way I feel uh, once I tell you what I'm thinking. Uh, And hopefully uh, you will uh, check things out. So I appreciate you guys. Let me peep it. Let me see who's on here. He Kush. I saw in the comments that I see here on Restream. Uh, Let me see what he could say is here. Yeah, a little bit on high still, but I moved on to Philly. Yeah, I believe all of us will look at after today. We definitely need to move to Philly if you haven't already. I agree because uh, we got to go. Uh, the season just don't stop it at the Chargers. As we know, the season moves on. Time waits for nobody. Let me just start there with you guys. Uh, thanks for those that are, are tuning in. Listen. For confidence-wise, the best thing happened for us on Sunday. We won. What's up, Gary? We won. Michael Evans, hey, man, we won. That's the major thing is, let's not forget about really what happened, okay? We, we missed a lot of people. A lot of people were not playing. Um. And usually, games like that, we lose. 
Uh, the, many people say, well, the big difference, of course, is Dak. Very well, maybe. But hey, Donald, what's going on? But what we cannot deny is Dak did not play defense, okay? When we have Dak Prescott, he's almost incredibly similar to Tony Romo in the fact, this little one fact. When Romo was in the game, we knew we had a chance. Let me just say that. Uh, With Dak Prescott, we have a chance. We have a chance to win. Without Romo, without Dak, we have no chance. They're very similar in that category. Uh, I'm not talking skill set wise, I'm just talking about their presence on the field. We know we got a shot with those two guys as our quarterback, so we had it. All right. But the defense, now, if you would have told me, if I would have told you guys that Lawrence is not playing, Gregory is not playing, uh, if I would have told you just those two, you would have said we've been in trouble. The confidence that the gentleman got this week will carry them and serve as some type of momentum heading into the Philly game. The best thing that happened was was that these guys, they bend, they bend it, but they didn't break. Uh, there was only 17 points scored. Hey, they they bend, they, they made guys kick field goals. Uh, you know, two touchdowns were taken back. Regardless, that's not our fault. Uh, if you made a penalty, you made a penalty. That's not our fault. Maybe that's the reason why you got the touchdown, because you had penalties. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I... I'm not, I'm I'm not going to minimize. What's up, uh, conscience, Kevin in the house? I'm not going to minimize the effect that the guys had because of the win that they they did. I mean, you can't deny confidence. All right. So we won the game. It was big. Everybody's on sky high. The press conferences. If you've been listening. Have been good. Um, I, I I can't, you know, we won. That's the bottom line. Those are games usually in the last few years we we always find a way to not get over the hump. Well, at least for one week we did. We got over the hump. So I'm I'm very excited about that. Uh, the guys, of course, played well. I've already kind of given a post game type thing for this one. I'm just going over, but I'm gonna set some up. Y'all just hang with me. At least I'm going to give you what's going on in my brain. Uh, We played so well. And the reason why we played so well is because we were forced. What's up? I'm trying to. We were forced to play players in positions that if the guys were healthy that did not play, we never would have known. i start with everybody saying right there. Had not Gregory and Lawrence been injured or were not playing. Hey, Wendy, I see you. Had Lawrence and Gregory, we would not have known, at least this, at least like right now, that Michael Parsons is a legitimate pit bull. We wouldn't have known it. Michael Parsons, if Michael Par- if Lawrence and Gregory were in there, Michael Parsons would have been in the middle of the field as our middle linebacker. All that stuff we saw him do Sunday, the dominance that he displayed, the havoc that he created, the whole game, we wouldn't have known if Lawrence and Gregory would have been there. And because we saw it, here's what I'm thinking, y'all. Because you saw the dominance that that man displayed. And I don't know, some folks going to say, well, it was against the Chargers, you know, uh, inexperienced, whatever. I, I don't know how much experience the tackle had over there. All I know is, is that Michael Parsons destroyed that man. The whole game, he got double teamed. We destroyed him. He destroyed him. 
Here's here here's 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 my thought. We won the game. Everybody know that. Here's here's what I'm thinking. Y'all come on talk to me now. Cause I need y'all help. Cause one of the worst things that have happened to the Dallas Cowboys over the years is what I call politics. Things that should be, they never do. And things that they do, they shouldn't. Here's my here's my question to y'all tonight. And, and maybe y'all need to, you know, maybe some of y'all will think this way and maybe I'm wrong. I need somebody to help me. You know, I'm not too proud to say I'm wrong when I'm wrong. If Michael Parsons is that dominant and caused that much havoc, why aren't we going to keep him there? And I'm not saying we should. I'm just saying you saw the impact Sunday. That's only going to get better. He was almost unguardable. Okay? I mean, you couldn't do nothing with him. He was dead. He was just that dominant. And I understand Lawrence is, you know, historically, you know, in our franchise, that little time span, he's been one of the best to do it. And and Gregory, of course, is is you know, Gregory can cause a lot of damage too. D Law had an incredible game against Tampa, you know. He, but he ain't do what I saw with Michael Parsons do. Good Lord of mercy, uh, Gregory causes damage, but you ain't never seen Gregory do it like that. This kid is different. Michael Parsons is different. And I'm going to say this. he Wherever you line him up, he's going to be good. No question. But actually, I'm going to go on and put it out here. Well, this is my show. And you know how I, I'm going to say it. I think after what I saw, uh, I, after what I saw Sunday, I believe you minimize what he can do by not putting him on that end. You put him in linebacker, what you going to do? Blitz him up the middle? He can do that. We all know that. He can cause damage up the middle. And I guess sometime in different packages, he still can line up outside of Gregory and Lawrence, and that'll be incredible. But, Lord, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, uh, Jerome? I mean, yeah, we can use him like a queen on a chessboard. If you don't know anything about chess, the queen can line up anywhere. Just go wherever she want to go. And I believe, you know, in football, they call, call it, you know, some call it the joker position. I get that. But if what I saw Sunday, what I saw is a player that probably eight times out of ten is going to cause some major controversy to an offense. And what I'm saying is, if you put him back at middle linebacker, which he is, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, I'm just trying to show y'all which position does it look like he going to have the bigger impact is the question. I would say, based off what I just saw, that his most reckless position where he's going to affect the game is going to be coming off the edge, playing d line, defensive end. That's what I see. I'm not saying he can't do it at linebacker. He, the boy can do it from, from anywhere. Okay? I just, I think we got, a, we got a problem. A good problem. I just want to see like, if you know this kid is unguardable and you know he can't be stopped, why are we going to stop him then? Why? Why Why are we going to stop him? Why are we going to stop him? The politics, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, and I'm not knocking. I don't want y'all to get me wrong. D-Law is supposed to play. I, I'm, I'm saying uh, Gregory, you know, hey, let him play. I'm, I'm not knocking it. I know both of them can cause damage but not that type of damage. Everybody can't do what, what Parsons did. That's 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 a different level. And, and that can't be duplicated. 
That can't that can't be duplicated. This kid in his rookie year. That this this is just starting, man. This is only gonna get better. Didn't you hear him say he ain't played DN since 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 uh high school? My God. And this is what he did. This is only gonna get better. I'm saying, see, the Cowboys have made a problem. This is what I'm saying. The Cowboys have made a problem like this. Just because you're loyal to this guy, you're loyal to this guy. You don't want you don't you. He automatically comes back in. He automatically comes back in when he gets when he comes back. I'm saying when he comes off injury. That's what I'm saying. Like D Law, okay. When D Law come back, he automatically goes back to his spot. Well, in these next few games, if this kid got, I mean, good God. If he needs next four or five games, if he do what we just saw, D Law automatically jump right back in that spot. Really? I mean, the kid only gonna get better. I mean, we. I mean, come on, y'all. He fighting. He he whipping double teams already. I mean, if you single, try to block him. He he gonna he gonna destroy that. I mean, he too fast. He's strong. He can go back inside. I mean, he's just getting started. And if D-Law, after the next four or five games, or even six, maybe, you know, just because they say six weeks, you know, the foot is something different. If D-Law comes back, does he automatically get his spot back? Really? And this kid tearing it up? This is the politics that I'm I'm speaking of, y'all. This, this, this is what I... This is what I'm going to have a problem with. I'm serious. I, I, I'm having a problem with I'm, I'm going to have a problem. How about this one? Let's go to work. I'm, I'm, I mean, we won the game. I'm, I'm glad about it. But let me say this. Donovan Wilson, groin hurt. Okay. Well, y'all saw what happened. Y'all saw Curtis and KZ. Y'all saw that? Okay. Uh, let's just say, for instance, Donovan don't don't play. Curse was just flat out a dog. Curse was everywhere. Okay, so when Donovan groin get healed up, does does it automatically mean he jump right back in the starting lineup and Curse go to the bench? This is what this is what. This is what the Cowboys mess up on. Like, for instance, like this. The stats say this. If I if I read the stats right, I think the Cowboys in total defense is 27, which means we're one of the worst defenses in the league for yardage-wise. You know, we haven't we improved from 30-something to 27. That's only going to get better, okay? But we're first in takeaways. When have the Cowboys at any point ever been first in takeaways? Well, part of the reason why we're first in takeaways is because of the personnel that's in there. Diggs, Diggs is, it looks like he's getting an interception every week. Diggs going to get his hands on the ball, look like every week. What Byron Jones used to knock down, Byron Jones was a great cover cornerback for us. Great all-pro cornerback. He just never picked the ball off. Diggs right now is the total opposite. He can cover, but he the ones that Byron Jones was knocking down, Diggs is catching it. Diggs is catching those balls. So to go back, when 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 Mr. Wilson, Donovan Wilson, Lord know we fell in love with Donovan. But my God, if Curse play like this, what, Curse go back to the bench? Man, again, these are good problems to have, but I'm I, I'm just at this point, y'all. And y'all, y'all, you know, maybe I know we all got our favorite, whatever, but look, put the best eleven on the field. That's that's all that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Put the best 11 on the field. It ain't like they're going to play every play on defense and switch it in, but but come on now. 
you can't you can't deny what we saw with Mr. Parsons. And that don't need to go exclusively back to middle linebacker. Jerome say can curse play corner. But not since he's been in the league, Jerome. He's been the safety ever since he's been in the league. Can he do it? He's fast enough. And Lord knows he gets his hand on the ball. What's up, Joe? Thanks for popping in from Italy. He gets his hand on the ball. He 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 plays a lot of man coverage. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't know what he played in college. I, I ain't done that kind of work on him. You know, extensive look background work on him. I I don't know what he can do. I just well, you right about that, Jerome. Jerome said he better than Brown. My God, anybody better than Brown. I'm just saying, y'all, when you have that type of performance, and there wasn't no flash in the plan performance, this dude is different, man. Michael Parsons is different. We haven't seen a guy like this on this team. The last guy that we had from that type of position on this team was DeMarcus Ware. DeMarcus Ware was different. When I say different, I'm talking about unique, unteachable talent, rare talent, Hall of Fame type stuff. That's what DeMarcus Ware is. He'll be getting a gold jacket one day. Before DeMarcus Ware, it was Charles Haley. I just named you two Hall of Famers. I'm telling y'all, I know it when I see it. Bar an injury, Michael Parsons is on that type of level. Everybody know it. And if you don't know it, shame on you. It ain't no luck. Let's see if he can do it again next week. He's going to do it again next week. And I'm saying, if you put him back in middle linebacker for 10 plays, I'm saying if out of 10 plays, and, and he plays middle linebacker six six or seven plays, he would not have the impact on a game playing middle linebacker like he would playing defensive end. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying he's gonna have not gonna have impact from the middle linebacker position. I'm saying it won't be just as effective as it is from defensive line. If it weren't for Michael Parsons, uh, the, the the quarterback. Justin Herbert would have thrown 400 yards. He would have thrown 400 yards against us if it weren't for Michael Parsons. That's how potent that kid was. And I'm telling you, you put him at DN for those same 10 plays I was talking about, he is going to make an impact, especially if it's passing plays, at least seven. He is – he, he – he, <laughs> I'm I'm convinced. All I need to see is one time. I know dog when I see him. I know a puppy when I see him. I know a real dog when I see him. Michael Parsons is a dog. Let me go on step it up even further. If DeMarcus Lawrence don't come back within the next five, six weeks, I'm going to go on and say this right now. As I already said at the beginning of the year, Michael Parsons is going to wrap up defensive player, uh, rookie, defensive rookie of the year in these next five weeks. It'll be over with. Because I'm fully expecting him to have at least four to five sacks. Got one last week. I'm expecting him to have four or five more sacks in these next five or six weeks. God knows how many pressures he's going to have. Come on now. I mean, look. I mean, the president, you have eight, <laughs> eight or nine. It was either eight or nine already. Come on, man. That That's going to get double. I mean, good Lord. By the time D-Law get back, this kid may have right at, right at 25 pressures. This kid, gonna, he's going to wrap up the defensive rookie of the year in these next four to five weeks. No, I, I don't have no doubt in my mind. I have no doubt in my mind. So, 
these are, I'm wondering if politics is going to take place. And on our team, that's what usually happens. But as I said before, it's a good problem to have. And these no next four to five weeks. Uh, and, and if he has, look, if he has, Jerome, they was slide protection. <laughs> they did. I watched the game over again. They did slide protection over there. The kid is just, look, the kid has just got something that I don't care what you do. He's going to make an impact. Now, let me, let me, y'all, y'all not feeling me, so I'm, I'm going to tell you now. He's faster than Lawrence Taylor was. Now, if some of y'all too young to remember, go YouTube Lawrence Taylor, but I was, I'm just old enough to remember Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor was the fastest guy to come around that edge ever. He's faster than him. He's bigger than Lawrence Taylor was. He has he's stronger than Lawrence Taylor was. You saw that how he played inside. This kid is just different, man. This kid is just incredibly different. It's raining here in Memphis. I hear it. If my power goes out, I apologize. I'll come back when I can. I'll just say that. But anyway, this guy can bend. When I say bend, you know how guys tackle stand up. He can get under that. He can go through you. Lord knows he can go around you. That, thank you. Perfect, Michael Evans. You're exactly right. I'm just I just glanced over it and now I see Derek Thomas. Exactly. It's almost yeah, they almost look alike, actually. As fast as Derek was, he wasn't like LT. This kid, but but look, Parsons is faster than Derek Thomas was. He's faster. None them guys didn't run no 4-340. Did y'all just hear what I said, man? This kid is 256 and run a 4-3-40. Do y'all understand that there are cornerbacks that cannot run that fast? This kid is a 250-some-odd pound. 256, I think they got him ready today. Run a fourth. Then look, oh, my God. This is this is it's, it's, it's what Stephen Jones said in this interview, and he wasn't insulting him. He just called it like it was. This is freakish type ability that you just cannot teach, you can't train for it. This stuff is God-given, and he is flat-out different. In the next four to five weeks, if Parsons play anywhere close to what he just did Sunday, y'all going to sit here and tell me to move him back to middle linebacker for DeMarcus Lawrence? And I love D Law, y'all, but you know I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't wreck D Law too. I don't call it like I see it. D Law ain't never looked like that. Now he looked like D Law played an incredible game week one. I, I look D Law, he looked like the old D Law. He ain't never had that type of impact, not since that year when he had 20, 20 sacks that year. But my God, this kid here, man, look. I don't see how I'm just I'm just saying. I, I mean I'm I'm serious. If if you don't pull people away, it's just like telling a basketball player. It's telling like it's like telling Kareem Abdul Jabbar, who who made a living off the sky hook playing down low. And you know Kareem will give you a dang near 30 points a night. Okay. It'll be almost like telling Kareem, okay. We see what you can do on the block down low. What we want you to do from now on, though, is we want you to play the perimeter. We want you to shoot threes. We don't want you to go down low. It's 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 just like that with Parsons for me. If this kid do what he do Sunday, I mean on Sunday afternoon, last Sunday, if he do that for the next four or five weeks, don't 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 take away my strength. 
And some of y'all are gonna say, well, you know, he he's gonna be everywhere. You can line up in it. No, 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 no. He's not gonna impact the middle linebacker like he's doing on down low. I'm sorry. That's why the defensive end get paid the big bucks. Middle linebackers don't get paid like that. Middle linebackers got to deal with a lot of trash and, and, and guards coming at them and all that kind of stuff. Defensive ends may have to deal with a tight end helping out a tackle or a running back coming out chipping them, but they find a way to get to the quarterback. That's that's what I'm saying. I just I – just, I'm sorry. And I hope that the politics – now, 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 I'll say this. In fairness to D-Law, Gregory, whoever else you want to name, if if Michael Parsons don't do something close to what he's doing now for the next four to five weeks, then I I, I take back what I said. I just don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> this kid different, man. This kid is different. We are witnessing the birth of a of a of a of an automatic dog. We, we we we're witnessing the birth of a guy that that you know somebody gonna say don't crown him yeah yeah I'm sorry I know it when I see it this kid if he can stay healthy is gonna be a Hall of Fame I ain't say no Pro Bowl I didn't say no All Pro I'm telling y'all this kid had is going to be if he can stay healthy because his mindset is doggish he he hungry. He plays hungry. He look hungry. He crazy. Hey, y'all hear his interviews? He crazy. I mean, he, he, he look like he want to go hit. Look like he want to hit the reporter. This dude is gonna be a Hall of Fame football player. You don't move him out of position where he's dangerous. Now, I mean, I'm that's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If KZ get his hand on another pick, we talking about safety problems and all that. And Malik Hooker, I mean, it doesn't matter time. If he can stay healthy, the, the safety problem is, is over. If Malik Hooker can stay healthy, we ain't hollering about no safety no more. Not no, no. If, if KZ gets another pick or gets his hand on the ball consistently, he's supposed to have two picks Sunday. Y'all remember the one he dropped? Matter of fact, the, the one that he did catch one, then they took the call a penalty now. That was a pick. He's supposed to add three. If KZ does this stuff again, it's gonna be hard for Donald Wilson to get back on the on the field. I'm just telling y'all. When Malik Hooker, if he stayed anywhere near healthy, look. The, the ability of Malik Hook is not questioned. It's just the, the health. If he can stay healthy, oh, my goodness. Everybody talking about Donovan Wilson and, and, and KZ or Donovan Wilson and Curse. I mean, Curse is who I was talking about with the interception. Man, look, if if if, if Malik Hooker can stay healthy, I, I'll take my chance with him and Curse as my safety. I, I, I would actually love it. <laughs> I know the ball gonna get took. I know we gonna get the ball. They too good. They keep their hands on the ball. That's what that's what what Curse came in as. His his reputation was was he's a ball hawk. KZ too. That's what all what we're saying. They're magnets to the football. I'm just hoping that politics don't get us again, y'all. That's what I'm hoping for. You know that's that that that's what killed us. I need I remind you of, of Jason Witten and the earlier Blake Jarwin and everybody knew the boy couldn't move. Jason Witten couldn't move. He catch it, huh? He catch it, but he couldn't get nowhere. Everybody knew that 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 uh, Jarwin was a threat. Couldn't he hardly get on the field? Because Witten didn't want to come out. Man, give me a threat out there. Y'all remember that? Politics. Politics. Let me go on. Let me go on. Let me, let me, let me go on say this. 
on the parlor. Ladies and gentlemen, no, he does not need to be starting. I have seen Tony Pollard all his college career. He played right here in Memphis. I saw it. He was not the starter even on Memphis team. He played the kind of role that he's playing now. He would get the carries. He would catch the ball. He played in the slot. He was not the primary ball handler. Darrell Henderson was here in Memphis. Antonio Gibson, the running back from uh, the running back from from uh, Washington. The football team, he played here at the same time in Memphis as Tony Pollard did. Antonio Gibson actually was not the starting running back either. Antonio Gibson played the receiver. Antonio Gibson played running back. He did the same thing Pollard did. He did the same thing. Antonio Gibson wasn't the starter here in Memphis. He played the kind of role. But he can run it. Y'all see that in Washington now. Pollard can run it. I just can't carry the load. Not to me. Not for no 17 games. See, that's for those talking about he should be starred. Know what Pollard needs to do. Kellen Moore showed it. Lord have mercy. Let's see if he stick to it. You ask me, I don't think he will, but he, that we just saw it. He needs to get the ball more. That's just the bottom line. He does. Because whenever he touch it, real good things happen. That's all I'm going to say. So. For those that want Zeke to run it 25 to 28 times a game, which he ain't done in a God knows how long. I'm saying he don't need to. What you saw last week, Sunday, is the way that the ball distributing in the running game should happen. Zeke had 16 carries. I believe Tony had 13. Hey. It is what it is. It works. Tony Pollard, if he gets the ball that amount of time, I guarantee you one or two of them plays, he going to bust one. I ain't saying he going all the way, but he going to bust one. He's going to get it at least. He going to get one play for at least 20 yards. He going to one for 15. Ziggy Elliott, let's just call it like it is. Ziggy Elliott had an amazing offseason. He did. He's in the best shape of his life. He still has a lot of punch. He's a great running back with great vision. But let's just be honest. He lost a step. You can tell. He's nowhere near where he was when he first came in. You can't run the way that he does and don't think that your body is not going to pay a price for it. The only running back that I've seen that did not pay a price, you know, that early, and he ran aggressive like that was Adrian Peterson. But even then, he caught up to him. Adrian started having, the, of course, these uh, these injuries. And, and, you know, he would come back and still be effective. But you just don't run the way Ezekiel Elliott runs. And don't think that you're going to – your tires got to flatten out a little bit. That's what we're seeing. That's why you got a Tony Pollard. Let me tell you what it looked like to me. If the Cowboys do it right, let me tell you who he looked like. Let me tell you what it looked like. Do you guys remember the Saints when they had Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara when they first when Kamara first started? Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember how potent that one two punch was? It's the same exact thing. Mark Ingram was the was the was the you know the the bell cow, real tough running inside, you know, you know, can take the hits. And all that and still be effective. And Kamara would come in and can catch the ball, of course, can run the ball. And it seemed like every time he touched it, you know, something great happened. That's Pollard. And it worked. What they call themselves, Thunder and Lightning. Yeah. Oh my God. Gary Barron. Oh my God. Emmett and Chris Warren. Mike Evans said, How about Emmett? Uh I mean, you know, we start talking about royalty when you start talking about Emmett. So, I mean, whatever y'all think about Emmett, it is what it is. He was, he was, he the best ever. Stat wise, they say, you know, no question about that. I, but, but if, if, if more would, would, you know, we've been begging for this for the last three years. I mean, good Lord. And, and, and what everybody's talking about is stuff we've been knowing all the time. Cowboy fans been knowing. 
All they got to do is thunder and lightning. If you want to call it, you know, that's what it was with, with Ingram and, and Kamara. This is that, that's what I saw. No surprise. It could be flat out potent. It could be. But we all know what time it is, which leads, of course, to my guy, Kellen Moore. I'll give credit to Kellen Moore. You know why I'm going to give credit to Kellen Moore? Because he didn't lie to us. Kellen Moore said at the beginning of the year, and he said it after week one. He said, we're going to take what the defense gives us, and we will attack according to the way that they're playing us. He said if they stack the box, we're going to throw it. They did that against Tampa. He said that if he, if you lay off, if you lay off and run a, a, a two safety zone, we'll run it. They did that last week against the Chargers. He didn't lie to us, y'all. He took what the defense gave us, and he called the plays accordingly. The Chargers lined up in a two, uh, two shell type defense, where both safeties are off the ball, which freed up a box, made the box open. They ran it. He told us he will. He did. He did, and they did. If they try, if you try to stack the box like Tampa did, you gonna launch it around. Back through the ball fifty eight times. So it's really about this, y'all. It's real about this. We don't know how we're going to play. Because Kellen Moore ain't lied to us. He has that much confidence in this offense that we can beat you any way you want to get it. However, which way you want us to, to poison you, we got the talent, we got the players, we got the offense, we're going to do it to you. You want Zeke to kill you? Here we go. If you want Polly to get in with it, here we go. If you if you want to stack it up and try to stop the run, okay. I got this 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 seventy five million dollar quarterback back here. I got three receivers, and the three receivers so good. Notice I just said three receivers. I didn't call them by name because look, Cedric Wilson can do the job. I the one that didn't come in was Noah Brown. I believe Noah Brown can do the job. We ain't got to say nothing about Amari Cooper and, and, and C.D. Lamb. We don't have to say nothing. They can get the job done. So it's whatever receivers you want to put in. Or, you know, we, we can do it. We can do it. So Kellen Moore didn't lie to us, y'all. I don't like it. I wish it was balanced, but let me let me say this. I I really believe, but let me, let me go on and tell y'all this. The defense that we saw Sunday against the Chargers, we will never see that again. Because if if somebody plays like that, man, we would we may not lose a game with this offense. I'm, I'm and I'm not I'm not saying because I'm a homer, or, you know, and a die cowboy fan. But if you play like that against us, you're not gonna beat us. That's why we ain't going to see it no more. Philadelphia this Monday night will not be playing the defense <laughs> that the Chargers played. I guarantee that. Matter of fact, if I was to put some put something on it, I would say that Dak Prescott is getting ready to throw the ball a whole lot this week. Because Philly going to bring, because they are not going to let, you see, because it, it was too easy. I believe that, that, that they're not going to let Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, do that. You, you, you're asking for it, for real. If you let that happen, if you if you let that happen, you 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 you're asking to get 30 points put on you. Easy. They're not gonna play like that. Philly is gonna blitz, run blitz. They're gonna blitz us, and and it's gonna be just like the Tampa Bay game. Dak is gonna throw the ball 40 plus times Monday night. And and he gonna light them up. I'm already telling y'all. I'm already on, I'm already saying it. So it cause a lot of folks gonna be saying, why? Why didn't he run it? He ran it last week. He ran it. Well, Kellen Morton already told us. He already told us. He already told us. Whatever the defense doing, that's what we're gonna do. 
whatever the defense doing, that whatever however they want to pick this poison, however they want to drink it, that's what we'll give it to them the way they want. If they daring us to run it, we're gonna run it. If they daring us to pass it, we're gonna pass it. When Philly start bringing that heat, please understand Dak is about to throw the ball. It's gonna happen. Uh, that we ain't gonna see that clean of a defense with that easy of a look never again. Cause because because everybody figured out now nah, we can't play Dallas like that. Exactly, Mike. I say Mike said they're gonna have a problem stopping the run without Brandon Graham. All the reason why more they're gonna be blitzing folks, Mike. That's the reason why they're gonna bring people in. Box gonna be there. It's easy to see. I forgot about Graham hurt. Graham is not there, so it's gonna even be easier. They gonna they gonna they gonna come in. And they're going to light them up. I'm expecting us to destroy Philly. I guess I'm on Philly now. I'm expecting us to destroy. Y'all hear what I just said? I'm expecting us to destroy Philly. Love Jalen Hurts. Like him. I like him. I like Jalen Hurts. I always have liked Jalen Hurts. Play like a underdog. You know, I like him. But he going to pay a hefty price this, this, this Monday night. He gonna get hit. Things on be ain't gonna be open. He gonna pay a price. Just telling y'all now. Darius Slay, Gary says, are gonna travel with travel on Coop. Pick your poison. If you travel with Coop, man to man, chances are that you either gonna leave Cedric Wilson one on one open or. You gonna leave uh, CD open one on one, <laughs> or if you doubling both, you know, depend on and, and CD line up in so many different places, it's gonna throw the whole concept of the defense off. If you try to double both of them, it just depend on where they at. But if you just, if you know, it, the CD will line up in the slot, and that's gonna take away something. You ain't put no line, but you ain't gonna bracket them. That that ain't gonna work. I mean, they're picking choices. I mean, it, it, it's a no. I ain't brought. I ain't. I ain't even. Coop is hurt. They just ain't said nothing about it. Whether he coming, Joe. He just got a rib issue, and uh, they haven't ruled him out or anything like that. They haven't ruled him out yet. So, you know, finally, I'm just glad they're trying to keep things under wrap. Let people guess. You know, they they told everybody that the Parson was gonna play defensive end. Three, four days before the game started. <laughs> like, where's the mystery? Let let folks guess. You know what I'm saying? Uh we got too many weapons, man. You just can't you know, you, you take out it's kind of like Kansas City game the other night. They dedicated themselves to stopping Tariq Hill. And for those that play fantasy football and got Tariq Hill on your team. Tyreek Hill, you know he only had three catches for about 20-some-odd yards. They took him out, but you pick your poison. You let Hardman kill you, and then, of course, you let Travis Kelsey destroy you. So I'm saying when you got weapons everywhere, you might be able to take one out, but you can't stop the show. And we got some guys on this team on offense like, okay, if you want to stop Coop, okay. Stop Coop. CD going to get crazy on you. Cedric Wilson can get crazy on you. Huh? So, so I mean, I, I, I get it if we ain't have nothing, but we got some. So, uh, you know, that, that's why I'm saying this, this, Joe said, I really don't trust you, Larry, and I dropped him in the ball. Well, he ain't dropped none last week. I get the ones you talking about before, but he, CD, CD, is, CD is, is a guy. And let me just say that. I get you, Joe. I understand he did drop a few balls uh, against Tampa and, and last year too, but I take my chance with CD. Put it this way, Joe: you may not trust him, but please understand, not too many defensive coordinators trust uh, a trust going one on one with CD either. Keep that in mind, Mike. Exactly, Mike said, "Don't forget our two tight ends." who really have not just been featured. Speaking of which, let me just say this. You know, our best tight end is not Blake Jarwin. 
I hope y'all know that by now. Bl- Dalton Schultz is our best tight end right now. Blocking, route catching. There, there ain't too much difference between Blake and and Dalton Schultz. The the biggest difference is, is that Dalton Schultz can block, which makes him more of a complete tight end than Blake Jarwin. We know he can catch. He made a big time catch. Uh, that third down catch where he was going to the ground. Dalton Schultz is a problem. He just don't get the ball like the three guys. But if he did, well, we saw that last year. He was the guy who was getting the ball last year from all the different quarterbacks we had. Dalton Schultz had an outstanding year. It's just in this offense, a tight end really not going to be featured. But you're absolutely right, Michael Evans. Don't forget about them because, see, if you forget about them, they can be one-on-one coverage easily, easily. Easily, both of them, Blake and and Dalton Schultz. In other words, it's just too much on this offense. It really is. So you can't. <laughs> it, it, it's hard. They, they this offense will give a defensive nightmare. I mean, defense coordinators. You can't. You can't get too much sleep preparing for this. This offense is legit, man. Let me say this. Let me go on and say this. Boy, this is really going to miss y'all. Terrence Steele? Mm. Okay, he got about, what, another four weeks? To, to show what he is? Let me just say this. Zach Martin and Terrence Steele were dominant on that right side last week. Dominant. Dominant. Brilliant game plan. Now, I don't know if y'all watch the game. Y'all need to watch the game again. Uh, brilliant game plan by Moore and Joe Feebleman, who's our offensive line coach. A lot of us gave a lot of credit to Terrence Steele, and rightfully so. But when you look at the game, y'all, y'all go looking for those that record, or if you have the all 22, go look at the game. What you're going to see is a lot of scheme work went against Bosa. Y'all remember when they kept lining up with the two tight end sets? That was for a reason. Because they want to put another hat on Bosa, along with Steel. So it wasn't necessarily primarily one-on-one against Bosa all day. It wasn't that way. A lot of that stuff was scheme-wise. They brought a tight end over there, two tight end sets. They slid protection to Bosa a lot of times. If you start looking at it, you got to really look at it. You just can't look at it on the TV. You really need all 22. You're going to see that game, the play, play calling was tremendous. Still did go against Bosa a whole lot or in the game one-on-one. He did. But uh, it wasn't like, you know, for the whole game. He had a little hip, but Steele was flat out incredible. I, y'all, if y'all got all 22, just just look at Steele and, and see what happened. Okay? That was that Steele, Steele and Zach Martin had, oh, oh yeah, oh, that's what I said, Gary. He has one on one. Bosa, we didn't hear Bosa's name. And part of the reason why we didn't hear Bosa's name, because he was tired. That first drive took a steam out, man. What was the play? How many plays was that first drive? Was it 14 or 15 plays? No, 13. Let me say 13. Was it 13 plays? 13, I believe. The first drive. And they ran the ball a lot. That took a lot of steam out. I always told y'all, the offensive line need to go forward, not backwards and pass blocking. They need to go forward, lay on these guys. Still with flat for laying on this guy. Both were too tired, man. Yeah. So uh, the first two drives was long drive. I mean, it was over with. It was over. He was too tired. Steel were dominant. Dom- Zach Martin and, and Steel were dominant. Which leads to this. I know he got to do it more than one week, but he got four weeks to get it done. Y'all putting Lyle Collins back in. I 
I'm just saying. See, the Cowboys got three straight home games, and then we got a bye. Then we're going against, me. Uh, I believe, Minnesota, at Minnesota. We got Philly. Then we got Carolina. And then my brain just lost. I'm, I'm sorry, my brain just lost. The Giants. We got the Giants after that. Philly, Carolina, and the Giants at home. We win. That was a real good shot, y'all. That we can, we can, we can win these next three. If we go into by week four and one, okay. I'm just saying, man. I, 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 I at one point, look, I realized, you know, you know, prisoner of the moment. I understand. I get, I. I, I right now I guess I'm talking as a prisoner of the moment. I'm just saying though, if Steel does, and, and you know his confidence is just through the roof, he went against the one of the best in the whole game. I'm just saying, I you know if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's all I'm saying. I I I want the best guys. Whatever is hot, let it stay hot. If it's hot, let it stay hot. Don't cool it down. Huh? My Carolina, big surprise at 2-0. I guess, yeah, I guess you can say that. Sam Donald look pretty good right now. Of course, McCaffrey is always going to be a problem. We already know that. DJ Moore, their receiver is going to be good. Well, you know, Carolina going to be a big game. But, I, but they're playing us at home. Uh... Well, yeah, still, Gary said still is not better than Colin. We wouldn't have to put so much help over there if Colin was playing. That's true. That is true. I'm not, I didn't say he was better. I'm just saying this. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm not saying he's supposed to sit on the bench. I mean, that the Colin's supposed to sit on the bench. I'm just saying, look, if, the, if, if it's dominance that's being showed at certain positions, You're going to at least have to have a conversation. Now, I know, again, prison of the moment, we ain't, we ain't, you know, we ain't, you know, he got another, he got to do it for another four weeks. I get it. I get it. But look, if these guys are playing lights out, don't turn the light off. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. If the guys are playing lights out football, don't turn the light off because of loyalty. Little politics. Don't don't do that. Let's keep the fire burning. You got to put your best guys on the field. Exactly. I get it. I get it. What's up, Jimmy? On Power Bean. Hey, for those that are on Power Bean, I'm sorry I didn't pop in on you guys. Listen, if you haven't followed my show, or following my show, or excuse me, if you aren't following my show, go to the, uh, go ahead and follow it now if you can. Just like it, and it'll give you the notification when I turn on. Everybody else here, uh, yeah. Put the best five on the field, Gary says, and Collins is without a doubt one of our best five. No doubt. Collins ought to be incredibly fresh too when he come back too. I hope he's healing, his body is healing, whatever, you know. He 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 needs to heal up. It, it, these five weeks actually will be a blessing in the sky. He ought to come back so fresh, it ought to just be, you know, just ready to roll. But still is is has shown something. At least he showed it last week. Zach Martin, oh my God. Dominant, just flat out dominant. And of course, this week he's going against his, you know, one of his his nemesis in Fletcher Cox. Always a great battle. So we're gonna get to see that again. Philly in trouble, man. That, that's all I'm gonna tell y'all. Now I 
I really ain't kind of looked at Philly yet, but I am. But I'll be ready to talk about Philly on Saturday. But I, I really don't see, you know, how anybody can stop. We really, you know, the truth be told, y'all. Now, everybody want to laugh and do this and want to say that, you know, if, but we really, to be honest with you, there's a great argument could be made that we really should be 2-0. and oh. And I'm not saying because I'm a homer and all that. I'm just saying that once you really think about what happened in Tampa, that's a good argument made. We should be 2-0. Oh. We should be 2-0. Oh. We should be. We should be 2-0. Oh. We had that game one. Better clock management. Would have just about had us a real good shot at winning that game against Tampa. Speaking of that, we almost lost the game because of bad, bad clock management on Sunday. Didn't I tell y'all that we're going to have to win the game despite coaching and all that kind of stuff? Bad decision making. I know that the clock went out and all that kind of stuff. They didn't know what the time was and all that kind of stuff. I get that. But again, they were caught off confused. So everybody want to blame the clock. But watch this. What nobody ain't saying is, is the confusion that was on their sideline. Because if you remember, the, the Chargers didn't call the timeout. That was was confusing them. They thought for sure that the Chargers were going to call a timeout and, and then uh, they would be able to run a play. But the clock just kept running. It put them in a panic. They didn't call the timeout at all. They wouldn't let the thing go down. That's what really messed them up. It wasn't the clock that just went out. They were like waiting for the, you know, them to call it, but the se- the seconds kept ticking like, oh, what do we do? I guess we're going to call a timeout because they're not using theirs. That's what messed them up. We lost seconds off the clock waiting on them. That's what happened, which means bad decision-making, bad coaching. Of course, the talent – overrode that because Zerline made the kick. But it wasn't because of us stopping the clock with five seconds to go to keep the field going. We had no choice because the child really the child still had all their timeouts. That's what messed us up. Everybody trying to say where well, the clock went out and the clock well we couldn't see the clock. We got no what messed you up was that the ref didn't blow the whistle. Because the Chargers did not blow the time for, you know, blow for a timeout. They didn't even freeze Zerline. Y'all notice that? You know, the ice to kick a timeout type thing? They didn't do that. The Chargers didn't even do that. <laughs> you thought that you, you would have thought for sure that they, before Zerline kicked the ball, there would have been a timeout call. That's what usually what coaches do. They did not even call the timeout. That's what messed them up. Huh? And 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 with five seconds ago, we were live like saying, oh man, I, I guess we better take this time out. <laughs> I, I guess we better, I guess we better call this time out so we can kick the ball. They ain't gonna call. Shoot, they, they thought that Zerline was going to miss it. If it would have been from like 40 yards, they probably would have called a timeout. They said, man, this man missed all these field goals last week. It's 56 yards. We ain't called no timeout. He going to ice himself. <laughs> he going he gonna to ice himself. He, we ain't got to call no timeout. Zerline, of course, straight down the middle. That's just a chance that we took. But. We almost lost that. Well, we lost a chance to win the game because of bad clock matches again. See, I, I don't I don't know, y'all. I've been saying the talent's so good, it's going to have to override some bad coaching spots and some bad decision-making and all that kind of stuff. It's, 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 we got that kind of – we got this that type of a team. So much talent that the talent can override bad spots. He just didn't do it in week one. But he did it in week two. We should see, we should see the same thing on week three. Listen, I appreciate you guys. I know you guys got to get ready to go to work. Uh, 
It's just my thoughts, y'all. It, it's not concrete. It's not gold. It's not that. It's just that I'm saying when it come, <laughs> Gary said it's been dumb a long time, Bishop. <laughs> when it come to things like I saw with Michael Parsons, just for a little small recap, if you see the impact that he was making on that Sunday, last Sunday, don't which don't you want to keep that same impact on the field? And somebody gonna say, well, D Law can do it. D Law ain't doing it like that no more. Too many surgeries. You know, you have multiple surgeries like you have, your body. It's, you know, your body goes down a little bit. And, you know, sometimes it never does get back nowhere near where you once was. I'm not saying D-Law is not – D-Law is still D-Law. He just don't generate that type of pressure, that type of impact. He don't do that. Gregory can do it. But as good as we seen Gregory make impact, and he can we ain't never seen Gregory do that type of impact. And if he's making that type of impact from that particular position, why are we going to minimize him by putting him back in the middle and linebacker? Where he's going to get had to play through traffic, where he's going to have to do that. And, and I didn't even say this. You know, a lot of folks been down on LV and Jalen Smith. Lord have mercy. They had a good game Sunday, y'all. I'm just saying, he was, he was, he, they, they both played a good game. All right. They played a good game. The Cowboys going to have a little small decision to make. All right. All right. I'm done. Let me say this. Um, I, unless something crazy happened, I will see you guys. I may come on again during the week. Just, I mean, just whatever, but. If not, I'm really leaning toward not because on Saturday at 3 p.m. and Saturday later that evening, I will be in Dallas or Arlington or wherever you want to say. Uh, I'll be in Dallas uh, for the event, for the meet, meet Jalen Smith, uh, greet and meet. A uh, little thing, I mean, the uh, event that West Coast Cowboys put together. So me, I believe, Boss Cowboy and OC and, uh, of course, West Coast. And uh, I believe Law Nation will be there as well. We all be there together uh, for that event. I will go live from there. Uh, and I will do the show Saturday at 3. It's probably going to be a real short show. I'm probably going to be doing it from my hotel room uh, from that point. Uh, but I will do the show then, uh, getting ready for that. It'll probably be real short. Then I ask you guys to come back with me live on that Saturday evening. I'll be going live from the event. Hopefully I'll get a chance to, uh, uh, no, I ain't going to cut Jalen. Jalen, uh, Jalen has played well. Uh, that's, that's just the truth. Uh, Jalen has played well. I, I do have a question I do want to ask him. Um, uh, I do want I got two questions really. Hopefully I'll be able to ask them both and ask him both those questions. Uh but if not, you know, we'll be in the house and if we you know, maybe he may pass by and wave, whatever. You know, he's not obligated to talk to nobody. I know he's gonna talk obviously the West Coast because you know they have that relationship, but I I thought that uh I think that he's gonna talk to all of us. I don't know. Uh but we'll be in the house, that's for sure. Uh, whatever that means, we'll be there. Uh, and I'll come live from there uh, that evening. Quite sure it'll be fun. My son would be there, so that's a show all by itself. <laughs> my son is going to be like, wow. You know, he's just going to, oh, my God. So it, even if it's just him and me, y'all know it's going to be flat out foolish uh, that night. Uh, and then I'll be in Dallas for the entire weekend I'll be there. I mean, I have tickets to the game on that uh, on that Monday night. I will be at the game in the house. Uh, that game uh, that Sunday, I believe, we also have 
Uh, we have a, a stadium tour that I'm set up to be on, whatever, where I go through everything and be in the locker room and all that kind of stuff. So I, I probably get y'all come sharing my joy. Y'all come sharing my joy. I'll go live, I guess, on that too and uh, and see what's going on. Uh, y'all just, it's going to be a fun weekend. I'm looking forward to it. So I'll see you guys probably, if not, uh, at any time this week, but definitely I will see you guys on Saturday. I'm going to do two things. I'll do a real quick short show at 3 o'clock. Uh, I'll do it at 3 o'clock. I don't know what what's, what time zone is Dallas is. Is it different from Memphis? I don't know. Uh, whatever the time zone is. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to shed gears. Gary, I'm, I'm, I look, I'm going to shed tears, man, because look, I, 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 you know that that intent. I get that Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis intensity in me there. See, when I go and I'm gonna get a chance to go on the field and everything, man. Look, I'm gonna go on that field. They go out to get security to get me off there. I'm gonna lay down in the stock. Are uh, we Central Gary? Okay, Gary. I, I, I hope you come, man. Look, come on down, man. Find me, uh, and uh, we we need to hook up since you there. We need to come on down. Listen, I'm going to lay in the stock. Somebody got to go out to pry me up. Y'all ain't playing no game Monday night. When the, when this, when the game starts, I'm supposed to see it be laid out in the stock. They going to say, we got this fool that just won't get up. They're going to have to get bring Dallas uh, Police Department, bring them down there, bring – look. Here, look. <laughs> they go. going to – Y'all got to come get me, man. Now, look, I haven't been there. See, I've been to Texas Stadium multiple times. I've never had a chance to come to there. I had too many back surgeries, couldn't travel. I was in school. I still am in school. I just really never had the time. This would be my first time going to AT&T uh, Stadium. This would be my first time uh, going. Been one ago, just never had the chance, never had the time. Too much stuff going on, work, everything else, never could go. Uh, finally, I got a chance now to go feeling pretty good in my body where I finally got a chance to, uh, to go, uh, finally, uh, to the, to the house. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, been a long time coming. Uh, so it's going to be a great, great few days of cowboy heaven. That's where I'm going to be at. <laughs> he said, I don't blame Buckley for me. I want to. If I come, I'm wearing nothing but a press out. <laughs> I hear you, Gary. You know what? I may have to bring mine, too. I just may need to just, just lay, the, lay, the, lay the stop, put the press all over the stop, and just and just start praying then, you know. Uh, y'all, some of y'all are wondering, what is a press out? Don't, don't worry about that. Y'all, y'all just, just stop. Just stop. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Those that know, know. Listen, I appreciate it. Let me say this, and I promise you I'm through. I want to personally thank all of you, those that have listened to me on Podbean, text. I see you finally. Glad you came in. Uh, those, of course, of you that have watched or watch, are going to watch this replay later, those of you that have listened and hang with me, we on last uh Saturday, we all did it was the hundred and fiftieth episode of the Big Time Show podcast. A hundred and fifty shows I have done. That is a tremendous milestone. Uh I was I didn't even know I did it. I would have said it last Saturday. Uh, Paul Bean reminded me, and uh, I was like, "Wow!" Uh, and of course, it wouldn't be nothing without you guys. Uh, you guys have made. If I've done 150 shows, you guys probably have done have made the show with your comments and your dialogue and the guests that I've had on. You know, you guys have done at least 135 to 140 of these shows. So it wouldn't be nothing with you out, you guys. And so I want to personally thank anybody who has rocked with me uh, and just wanted to listen to what I had to say. And, of course, 
I've always tried to tell you guys, I hope that you can tell that this show here is kind of open. Uh, we have fun on the show. We can agree to disagree. Uh, you got your voice. It, it, you know, it matters a whole lot here. Uh, without you guys, I'd just be sitting here talking. So for whoever is listening to me, has, you know, downloaded the shows on iHeartRadio, Pandora, uh, Tumblr, uh, all the other very Google podcasts, all of the very Spotify, uh, Pandora. I'm sorry. I think I said that early, but who's ever, wherever you listen f- to this show from, I personally want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you watched on YouTube or Twitch and definitely on Facebook, uh, again, I want to tell you, thank you. And I hope, hey, hope y'all keep hanging with me. I'm going to try to do the best I can, try to try to see how we can uh, take it to the next levels. And who knows? You just never know. And I'll leave this with you. You just never know how God will bless you. You just never know. You don't know the time. You don't know the season. You don't know when. You don't know where. You don't know from who. This is how things start, y'all. Uh, I'm grateful for the humble beginning. If I only got seven or eight people listening, I'm, I'm grateful for the seven or eight. This is how it all starts, y'all. You never know who's watching when you do this kind of stuff. You never know. It's kind of like the other day I was watching, and I got an inbox from uh, my guy Quincy, Quincy Carter, former uh, Cowboy quarterback. I mean, you just never know who watching. You never, you never know who's looking. And who knows? One day God may bless, bless this or breathe on this, breathe on this thing. Who you know? Somebody might want to call and pick up the show. I claim it. You know, I I just never know. You never know how God will bless you, even with the things that you do, the things that you do every day. You just never know when your quote-unquote season will come. You just don't know. It can come from anywhere and at any time. Your job and my job is just to keep plugging and keep doing the work. You don't know when elevation will come. You just don't know. And it ain't going to necessarily be the way that you think it's going to come. I mean... It, it, it is it's amazing. Uh, so I'm just going to keep doing what I do. I'm going to come on look every Tuesday and Saturday and let the chips fall where they may. I'm just having fun. Uh, this was a hobby of mine uh, that's turned into something slightly serious. It's not my uh, primary source of income. I got a job just like you got one. I clock in. When I don't clock in, well, I do clock in. Clock in. I work at a school. Uh, I'm a doctoral student at Grand Canyon University. I'm in school right now. I'm going to actually get off here and do some more work, homework. Uh, so I'm pretty busy. I ain't even got to the church, of course. Y'all know I'm a sister pastor uh, at a church. Uh, I'm, I'm just busy. Uh, don't really have a lot of time for a lot. Then I got a seven-year-old over here who demands attention. Uh, and I got a wife over here who demands it. I mean, come on now. I got I got a lot of, but when it comes to this, you just never know how God will bless. I hate to do scripture, but I am a preacher. You see, you know, you 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 do the the watering and the and the tilling. You do all that. You put you put the seed in the ground. God gives the increase. If you do the work, God will get it. It's, it's almost like you reap what you sow. You put your time in it. There's going to be some type of harvest that comes out of it. It has to. I'm, I'm speaking for y'all now. Just so y'all don't give up on nothing. Don't give up on nothing. Don't give up on nothing. You don't know when God is going to do it for you. You just got to keep working. That's what I'm doing. So, hey, if the Lord allow me to live, I'm just going to keep going. I got 150. Let's try to see what the next 150 look like. 
Let's see what the next 150 look like. I never thought, for instance, that, uh, you know, it may not be big to y'all, but it's big to me. I, I really don't, you know, I didn't think I'd be going to Dallas to go to no event at a meet and greet with a, you know, a, a present cowboy and all that kind of stuff. I didn't think that the podcast would go to that point. I didn't know. But I'm there. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? Let let this show be kind of an example to you. Don't don't you just do the work. Whatever you're doing, you do the work. Just do it. You don't know where you don't you just I'm not exactly you just don't know. You know, but you know something is gonna happen. You just don't know when, but you know something is going to go down. You just know it. Huh? I put it I put it on uh, Gary. I put it on my Facebook page earlier. I'll do it again. Um, go to my Facebook page. I got the flyer on there. For those that want to know, I got it on both the Big Time Show, wherever you're watching me from, the Big Time Show, and my personal page, which is Douglas Lewis Brooks Jr., I put the flyer there and the link so that you can buy the tickets if you want, and you're going to get it at a discount. If you're going to use a promo code, use my my show code, which is the Big Time Show. Just plug that in. You'll get your tickets, and you'll get your discount there. Just pay it on there. You'll see it. Go to my uh, personal Facebook page. For those that are on Podbean, uh, if you're interested, if you're in the Dallas area, um, uh, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to type it for you. Again, if you're not my friend on Facebook, uh, this is where you'll find that information. Uh, I'm typing it in now. Or just go to Facebook and find these two pages and follow both of them, and you'll get it, and there it is for you. Right there, Podbean. I just put it in there. All you have to do is go do that, and if you're interested, if you're in the Texas area uh, this Saturday night, please just uh, follow that. Follow me on Facebook. The flyer's there. The link is there also. I'll be putting it there during the week as well, leading up to it. Uh, Got a few people in Texas who who listen to me. I don't know. You You just never know. I'm going to say it again. You just never know. Click on there if you want to be there. I'll be there. I love to meet some of the people that have supported me and followed me. I love to meet you there. And hey, you come on, hang out with me, and we'll we'll hang out for a few hours there. Let's have some fun. I don't know nobody there in the first place. I I just know I know boss and I know uh, West Coast from you know through Facebook and all that kind of stuff. You know, uh, I know law and all that, but I don't you know I don't know nobody there. <laughs> my wife gonna be there. I know her and my son will be there. Uh, I'm good, but uh, it'd be nice to meet some of you guys who at least watch the show one time, or whether you watch it a hundred times. It'd just be nice to meet some of you people who uh, supported me. So I will see you guys on this Saturday night. Let's go, Cowboys, y'all. We getting ready for Philly. We put we put the Chargers to bed. We we'll, we'll put the Chargers to bed. Good night, Chargers. We'll see you. In- when we see you, we through with the Chargers now. I ain't talking about the Chargers no more. We beat them. They're over and done with. It's Philly time now. It's, 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 it's division rival time. All these games count for real. It's, it's time to go to work. We, we, we focus now on Philly. That's it. Looking forward to it. I ain't going to have no voice after Monday night. I'm going to come back to Memphis. Just ain't going to have no energy. Just. Cause I'm gonna act like I'm playing. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to run out. I'm, when they run out and the smoke going there and the fire and all that, I'm trying to do that too. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to run out with them. There ain't no doubt about it. They'll probably look at me. The game won't even start on time. The ball head band with a broke back. He out there and they done tackled him on the field. <laughs> Okay, wish I could, but I'm in the Middle East currently. Tex, you're in the Middle East? Tex, where are you?
Appreciate you, Tex. I, I'm just reading the comments on pod, man. Tex, where are you? You said, I wish I could be there, but I'm in the Middle East currently. Tex, are you out of the country? Come on, talk to me. You on here. Are you here, Tex? Y'all forgive me. I, I didn't know Tex was... I'm working in Bahrain. You know what, Tex? I was wondering... Who was listening to me from, B- I don't even know how I pronounce this, Bahrainian, B-E-L, let me look at this. Let me see how you spell this. I was wondering who, Bahrain, B-A-H-R-A-I-N, I don't even know where that is that country there, but I was wondering because it always says somebody will listen to me in that part of the world, and I said, like, really? Who in the world listens to somebody like that from Bahrain? And it was you all the time. Tex, I appreciate you. Tex, just for curiosity, y'all forgive me Facebook and everybody else. Uh, Tex, what time is it there? You're from Texas, but you're in Bahrain. Are you in the service? Are you in the service, Tex? I'm from the Army. I'm, I was an Ar- I'm an Army vet. It's 2.30 in the morning there. Wow. Man, I appreciate you. So that means all this time, no, you're on contract there. Okay. Okay, I appreciate you. So all this time, you will. How long have you been there? How long have you been there? How long have you been there? Text. All this time, you have been listening to me at two thirty in the morning. Man, you must like what I say. I I really appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, and my guy, five years on and off. Okay. Joe from Italy and and Tex, y'all are two. Now, now I hope y'all don't get mad. These are my two favorite people who listen to me because anybody that would listen to somebody at 2.30 in the morning, you know, just hear about some cowboy stuff. Uh, Tex, are you even seeing the cowboy games in that part of the country? I mean, do you have a way to see it? I know I know you got internet there. Are you Are you able to see the cowboys play at all? Where you are? Just curious. I'm just curious. Or are you leaning on people like me to tell you what went on during the game and stuff like that? Facebook, I ain't even looking at y'all comments, but I y'all just hang with me. I'm talking to my my guy Tex here. I'm just waiting on his response. Are you able to watch any cowboy games? Are you able to see it or whether that's by replay or are you able to see it live? At all there. Let me see what he says. I watch it, but it's not easy to stay awake for the full game. I hope the Eagles put them hope the Eagles put they put the Eagles away early every weekend. Or well, Tex, I really appreciate you, man. I really do. I really do appreciate you, man. Thank you for uh hey. I guess halfway trusting them and listening to me. I, I appreciate you so much. Uh, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, that just made me feel good, y'all. That did. I, that did. That, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Uh, Tech could just go on, go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? 2.30 in the morning. Quite sure you got you to gotta work in the morning, but, you know. Uh, the reason why I appreciate him because Tex has been on pretty much just about every show I've done in the last maybe month and a half, two months or so like that. When he finally found me, he's been hanging with me ever since, and I know he's on because I know he uh, he has to have a live notification that comes on. He has to. So when he hits his phone or computer, whatever he has over there, he gets up and he, he got – look, he's going to make his points known plenty of uh, uh, comments that he makes on here and all this. I did not know it was him. 2.30 in the morning. My goodness. 
uh, for that. I'm I'm really appreciate. See, that's what make. See, that's what give me a little you know drive to keep going and you know just keep doing what you're doing because as I just told you, it, hey, hey Gary, it's almost like the preach word. Usually, when somebody preaches, it's always accompanied by some type of sign or wonder. Y'all know that's preaching type stuff, but that's just true. Or a confirmation of what you said. Didn't I just tell y'all that you just never know who's listening and you don't know where the blessing come from? So y'all thinking about money. I'm just looking for the blessing of confirmation. And my goodness, text just gave it to me. Listen to me from, I can't even pronounce the country. By Baal Haran, I think. I don't know. It's in the Middle East. And Texas listen to me because I come on during this time at two something in the morning. I mean, it's just just a blessing. That is. Thank you. I just look, that just gave me some 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 energy. It really did. I appreciate you. Listen, I see you guys Saturday, uh, three o'clock. It'll be a brief show, and then I will come live at three. Uh, Text. I don't know if you have a Facebook account uh, or YouTube account, uh, but if you have a YouTube account, just search out the Big Time Show and follow that. You'll be able to see it live if you have a YouTube. If you have a Facebook, look right up there now, and you will see how to how to link on to that. One of those two ways there on Facebook. If you have it there. Um, and you can see what everybody else is going to see live. I don't think I can do it here on Podbean because actually, to be honest with you, okay, you got me on YouTube. Good. You be able to see me. I was just, if you don't have me, look, everybody go join my YouTube page, please. I'm begging. Go to my YouTube page, the Big Time Show, subscribe there. Uh, if you're on Podbean, if you're going to listen to this anytime, I suggest that if you want to see all the little stuff that's going to happen this weekend, I suggest that you go to my Facebook page, Douglas Lewis Brooks Jr. or the Big Time Show and follow those two pages. Turn on those live notifications and you'll be able to see, you know, how we're going to act this weekend. I can't do it on Podbean. It actually be robbery to do it on Podbean because you can't see nothing. Uh, you can hear, but I don't think I'm going to do anything from Podbean on the weekend. I just don't think it be. I'll do it for that 3 o'clock show. But I don't think that I'll be able to do, you know, live stuff from Pie being on there. So I appreciate you guys. Go ahead and follow me and uh, there and you, you won't miss nothing. OK, thank you, guys. I'm out of here as usual. You know how we get down. It's time to go. This is y'all. The big time show. Put your hands together. 151 episode in the books. Woo! Text you bless me tonight. It's 8.39 p.m. in Memphis. Text you bless me tonight. I thank you so much, brother. Do it again this Saturday, three o'clock, Bobby, and I will be with you. This is the big time show. See ya.